Welcome everyone to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about Heels Season 1 Episode 3, it's called Cheap Heat. So full spoilers for the episode as always. And obviously I've been somewhat into the show, I've been continuing with it, there's been a lot of things that I've liked about it. Uh, both just as a TV show and also someone who does like wrestling, so does kind of get some of the the stuff they're playing with, the motifs, the, the inside lingo and stuff like that. I think this is probably the best episode of the show so far, and it's it's got a lot of high points, uh, just in terms of the narrative storytelling, but I, I feel like I almost had the most rewarding kind of like moment as a wrestling fan in this episode. Um, mainly what Jack does to Ace in this episode, I thought was really smart and a way to use... Because this show's been using wrestling terms, it brings up kayfabe, it brings up faces and heels, and it does in this episode multiple times. And even the idea of heat, the idea of cheap heat, which is just like a, like, much like a cheap pop is the opposite, which is where you mention the town you're in and it gets everyone to cheer, it's a cheap pop, it's an easy pop. Um, cheap heat's kind of the opposite. You you insult the town you're in, and that gets the crowd to boo. Easy, it's an easy easy boo, right? It's an easy reaction. Uh, and the, both the boos and the cheers are equally important. You need to have people who are being booed and people who are being cheered, and that's all fine. But what I thought was impressive about this is that the premise of this episode, uh, which is mostly revolving around the next wrestling show, which is the first one the Ace is back at. He's in the main event against the rookie which Rooster's not very happy about, but we'll get back to that. Uh, CM Punk's in this episode, he plays uh, the... Was it was it Ricky, the... the, the, the what, was, what was the name? Hold on, let me, let me double check the exact name. Oh, he's not in the, the top cast. God damn it, IMDb. Um, like, Ricky Rabies, that's what it was. So, you've got all that going on, and that's cool. But the thing that Jack does to Ace was so sly to me uh, in the sense of, of what it played on and it's something that felt very contemporary because i feel like a lot of the other things that the show talks about are references in terms of wrestling terms are all very old school they've all been around for a long time if you go back to the 80s or i'm sure further back than that but certainly in terms of my own knowledge if you go back to the 80s you hear about these terms being used, they've been over about faces and heels and pops and all these things and kayfabe. And I'm sure this has always been a thing too, but as a contemporary viewer of wrestling, one of the things that's happened more and more, especially in the mainstream, and by the mainstream here I mean WWE, is that sometimes, probably more than they would like to admit, when they've picked someone who they want to be their face, their big super face, who's going to be the, the, the main guy, the main attraction, the one who's going to be on the posters. You know, in the past, there was, there was a Hulk Hogan, and then there was, there was a Stone Cold, uh, who was also kind of like a almost a lucky thing, because he wasn't meant to be a face in the first place, which is kind of the opposite of what I'm about to talk about, is that sometimes when they try to make someone the big heroic main event baby face is sometimes it backfires and the crowd shits on it right it's something that happens uh roman reigns is, a, is the big recent example in recent years uh but there's definitely been others when they they really want someone to be the face and it's not so much obviously the difference here is is that is that jack is smart enough to know what the reaction he's going to get with you know the reaction that ace is going to receive based on what happened when he cried in the ring and based on the promo he's written for him, because I was thinking this, there's, there's a scene early on in the episode where Ace is practicing the promo in front of the mirror and Crystal's there and is kind of, you know, and she's still kind of suggesting, hey, maybe you should be a heel. And clearly Jack agreed with that when she suggested it last episode and he saw examples of him reacting to the hecklers at the, the, the karaoke bar. Um, but as I was hearing this promo, I was actually getting ready to critique it because I was thinking to myself, this wouldn't work. The, the crowd... The crowd will boo this. Like, at least in a real wrestling show, in a real modern wrestling show, the crowd would boo this lame attempt at winning them back. It wouldn't work. Uh, this is an example of having to uh, roll with the punches and, and that kind of thing. And so, sort of, okay, this is the hand you're dealt, so you have to build a story out of this. And, and Jack makes a couple of references to that, which is cool. Um, 
So when we get to that that moment in the episode where he actually goes out and delivers this promo and tries, and the crowd are booing him and they're not really going along with it, and then this woman up in the balcony calls him a crybaby and he's like, "Who said that? Who said that?" And he starts sort of shooting back at her uh, with the heckles, and she throws um, uh, tissues at him, a packet of tissues, a little you know one of those little portable packets of tissues you get, and. Of course, as soon as I saw her in the crowd, I recognized her from earlier in the episode. She had one scene earlier in the episode when Jack first arrived at the at the at the, the show at the building. He got he gave this woman a box and said, "Hand those out to everyone." And sure enough, as this scene goes on, eventually the entire crowd starts throwing tissues at Ace, and it's a visual. It's a big moment. It's a big visual. It's a big heel kind of like, defining moment. And there's a couple of things you could say that he's trying to do here. One, obviously, it's just to create the heat itself, but two, also, they just did the simple idea that this is going to make Ace maybe want to be a dick to everyone, because that's kind of how he reacted before. Um, But when you go back to the start of the scene, and you realise, no, the woman who started this, the woman who first threw the tissues at him, the woman who heckled him to get this going was the one who was the plant. She was the one who was put there to do this. This was her job for the night was to make sure this happened. This was all Jack's conniving. And I think what made this really work to me is that I recognized as someone who knows how wrestling works that this was never going to... It shouldn't have worked. You know, I, I was worried the episode was going to pretend that it did work. But instead, it turned out, no, Jack knew what he was doing. He knew the crowd was going to react this way, and he's making this work. And then, obviously, the story of the episode is that he goes on to accept his healdom, if you will, especially after the conversation that he has with Rooster. Now, don't get me wrong, Ace does not come off well in this episode. He comes off as a pretty big dick, um, more so perhaps than he has thus far. Um, it was His dickishness in this is definitely better portrayed than that first episode uh, scene where he was an asshole to the, the woman at the store. But this may actually make him more of an actual dick as a character, though. And... He comes off as a self-entitled, selfish piece of trash in this episode because he's upset he can't be the face. And when he comes back, even though he puts on this great heel performance, he comes back and they're all congratulating him and he yells at Crystal, which, by the way, multiple times throughout this episode, I was yelling for Crystal to run away from him. Like, get away from him. And then he has a cheek to say, you're not my girlfriend. How, how do I make that clear? Like, 10 minutes after we've seen them have sex. Uh, so demoralizing and all those things. And then, you know, he, he calls Willie a bitch, which is the moment that makes Jack properly snap and, like, drag him away and, like, have the serious conversation. And he's like, are you happy? Are you happy? I'm a heel. This is what you wanted, Jack. And it, this idea that he's going to be more of a dick, he's going to use this to be even a bigger shitbag in, in, the, in the real world. Um, and there's a great line earlier on, which I didn't mention the opening sequence. There's a flashback sequence at the start of the day that their father committed suicide. And I don't, you know, I don't think how, how specific we got about how he died. Uh, but, you know, it's this thing where he's out jogging in the morning. He says hello to a bunch of people. He's clearly friendly with everyone in town. He goes home. He mows the lawn. Presumably with the, the very same lawnmower that we saw used at the end of the last episode, which I thought was a very nice touch, uh, given how dusty it was as well. It probably hadn't been used since uh, he mowed the lawn that day, which adds a bit of subtext to that whole thing in the you know in retrospect. But he kills himself at the end of the scene, and it's actually Ace who comes out and finds the body. And Jack has a great callback. You know, the reason why that scene's in this episode is because Jack brings it up later. He, you know, because Ace says, you know, Dad was a, a face. I want to be a face like Dad. And he leans in and says, Dad was a face. He knew you were in the house. And that's all he says. And it's like this soul-crushing moment for him. It, it, it's just, it's wonderful. And this is one of two payoffs to that opening scene, that opening flashback scene in this episode. You've got the idea that Ace is trying to live up to who he thinks his father was, but maybe dealing with the realisation of what he was actually and what he wasn't and struggling with that, which maybe, you know, makes us sympathize with why he is such a dick, dick bag, but still, uh, it is something 
that I think is there smartly. And then the other thing, of course, is at the very end of the episode, where Jack ends up standing in the same spot that his father died, as he's breaking down under the weight of juggling everything that he's juggling in his life. He's trying to do what his father did, which is run this wrestling company whilst having a married life with kids, whilst having a job, presumably, and all this stuff. Uh, right after he's had a fight with uh, with Stacy, So, all that stuff, I think is pretty well done. I think it's the strongest the core brother character drama has been throughout the three episodes. And on top of that, I think how it uses the wrestling to tell that story and to show us how savvy Jack is at the business and knowing what he's doing uh, is also really smart and kind of enjoyable to watch play out. Uh, so, all that stuff is really solid. Uh, and I'm I'm fairly impressed with this episode and obviously i need to talk a little bit about cm punk who's uh called then is kind of a a sort of old timer who's a bit of a draw so they can market a match with uh with jack and that's it's hard not to be entertained by this he comes out like i say he's, he's got a whole ricky rabies thing uh his son's got like a drone that he's flying around the arena that then spits blood onto Jack is like the whole thing he's, he's, he's a real like I've seen CM Punk act in a couple of things before but he kind of just came off very I don't know stoic and kind of like reserved and it kind of felt like he was just being kind of serious whereas here he's like a proper caricature he's like you know he's got a bit of an accent he's being this kind of you know really enthusiastic old timer who's so thankful but then has this crazy character in the ring uh he's very entertaining and it's a very, it's a very interesting time to be seeing him in something else again because he just came back to wrestling like last week so that's cool that's, a, that's a, it was fun for that stuff as well uh i mentioned crystal crystal you, you know i i felt bad for her this episode one of the big things that comes with cm punk is that he has his son he also has his valet who it sounds like is his wife until the end of the episode when it's revealed that she is not his wife. He has another woman who is his wife, and she's just his valet. Uh, even if they were once a couple once upon a time, that has not been the case. And it's kind of this gut punch for Crystal, who, who's kind of, like, sees hope in this woman, that she's still doing this with, you know, her with her guy, you know, because she gives us this advice, you'll stick to your guy, you'll take your places, and it'll be the best. It's not a great business for women, but if you play your cards right, you'll you'll get a nice spot. And it's kind of this thing where we know she wants more than to be a valet. We know she wants to be in the ring herself. We know she has a mind for it. She thinks about these things. She came to the same conclusion that Jack did. If anything, she came to the conclusion first and suggested it, and Jack agreed with it, which might even be more important. Um, So... Watching her sort of take this advice where she's told that, ah, oh, you know, when he's in a bad mood, you know, just give him some womanly love and that'll, that'll put him on the right track. And she does that after his promo where he feels like shit because he was booed again. She just kind of goes for his cock, like immediately, just goes for it, goes, goes for that ace of cock. And they have sex. And I swear this is the third episode in a row where she's been topless. And I'm not keeping track. It, it's just it's sticking out to me that they're finding a way to do it every single episode. I'm like, seriously, if episode four has her with a top off again, I'm I'm going to be, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm, I'm, go I'm going to be calling the show out for being skeevy. Anyway, so they have sex and they seem like, yeah, it's, it's like it's gentle a little bit right after, right? There's a little kiss afterwards and it's kind of whatever. But then he's a dictator later in the episode. And then, of course, Crystal finds out that this woman with uh, Mr. Rabies isn't even his wife. He's got another wife that he's wanting to get back to. She's just the valet. This is her gig now. And she's never... And she says something and she's walking away like, oh, just make sure you eat like this because you want to stay skinny. Trust me, staying skinny is important. And it just kind of paints this like dark, foreboding picture of what's ahead of her. And it makes you want to root for her again. I, I think... As far as the characters goes, you really want to root for her. She's kind of the actual baby face in the whole show in a lot of ways. It's funny we have both brothers being heel now, you know, because Ace kind of solidified it by turning heel this episode. 
but she is the actual genuine baby face that you want to root for. And obviously, you, the real people you root for in terms of the main characters, because, you know, they're, they're slowly becoming a bit more... I mean, maybe not ace quite yet. I mean, he did go through something traumatic. Don't get me wrong. Like, they're, they're giving him some layers, but, you know, he is... <laughs> he, is he is a complete dick. Let's not beat around the bush. Um, and he's scenes with Rooster kind of, like, get into this a little bit as well. Rooster feels hard done by because the new guy has been put in the main event. And what Jack says to explain it does kind of make sense. It's like, well, yeah, but I don't want him beating you. He needs to beat someone who's flexible, who's new, and can take a loss. You're, you know, an established mid-card guy who's got personality. But later on, when he's recounting this to, to Ace, you know, he makes a point of saying that that's what all of the indie promotions have said about him. That they all say that he's good, he's got a lot of heart, and he's got raw passion, and he's good in the ring. But they never elevate him to that main event status. And... He points out that that belt looks better with a white backdrop. You know, he's commenting on the inherent racism of the business. Um, and this kind of, like, I think sets him up as a little bit of a face in the audience as well. You know, if if, if we use the wrestling terminology to look at the potential of where the story... And this is something you do in wrestling, is you kind of try and predict where the story's going to go. Uh, and, hell, even uh, Jack points this out, that they know the audience, at least above a certain age, all know that it's predetermined. The audience know that they know, and they know that they know that they know. You know, he has that exact line almost. But that's part of the fun, right? For for any sort of adult fan, is that you, you kind of like you, you you talk about it in terms of the storyline and like what makes sense and what tells the best story and all these things. And what I thought, like the ace, the ace face, the face ace, the ace face move. <laughs> Not for the wrestling character of Ace in front of the crowd. He's he's a heel now. He's going to accept that he's a heel eventually, and he's going to be a dick to everyone, and it's what he's going to excel at, and that's fine. But the face move for us, right, for the real audience, for the TV show audience, who's going to like his character for making the right choice, and I thought this is where it, where it was going to even go in this episode in terms of being brought up, and it wasn't, but I still think this might be where it's going to go, is that I think... Ace might actually do something kind of selfless and suggest that Rooster be the big face who ultimately wins the belt. Because because part, part of me was thinking throughout the episode that Jack, by the end of the episode, he might somehow turn face. Like, he might somehow, in being beat down by Mr. Rabies, that he <laughs> he somehow does a, a turn himself and becomes the badass hero character of wrestling, right? And he doesn't. And I went back to my original thought was, well, surely the perfect storyline in the ring, then, it, it, they need a face. They can't, both brothers are heels now, right? Which is perfect for the title of the show. Heels, it's plural. But there needs to be a face who ultimately wins the story. And Rooster, who I think this episode, you know, it puts him through a little bit of a phase where he's also been a little bit of a dick. He's been a dick to the new guy because he's getting the main event spot. But he ultimately, you know, listens when people talk to him about, you know, you're taking it out on him, it's not his fault. And he's nice enough to him at the end when he you know, gives him the drink in the car. And it's like, and he says thanks. And it's like a genuine smile. And it's a genuine, like, you know, I'm, I was being a dick. I'm sorry. They're kind of setting him up, I think, to, to maybe be, like, be deserving and also be the one that makes sense for us to watch finally beat the bad guy. Now, whether he beats Ace for the belt or Jack for the belt by the end of the season is another question and I don't, I don't really know i mean it's hard to switch the belt between them because they're both heels it's very rare to do the heel versus heel you can do face versus face quite easily but heel versus heel is a little bit tougher because the audience have no one to root behind uh but that doesn't mean they're not going to do it and the idea that ace might say no i, I you know i'm when when i win the belt i want to lose it to him i want to lose it to rooster i want to put him over he's earned it he's been around he's good in the ring he deserves it you know, do this for him. And, and when Jack says to Rooster this episode, you know, you deserve a shot at the belt when it works for the storyline. So immediately I started thinking about this feels like it's been set up so that that'll be the feel-good moment is when he finally says to him, look, it's right for the storyline. You're going to be the super face against both of us, right? Um, There's a lot of interesting stuff to play with there. Um, And that, that's getting more into the actual wrestling part of it than the actual character part, which I've already talked about, with them both trying to... kind of both trying to and realising what living up to their father really means, and having, you know, 
Jack cry in the same spot where his father committed suicide as it's all kind of starting to tumble it down. Uh, which leads off nicely from the Stacy storyline, which is that her friends are in town, or her old friends that she's not seen in a long time, and they go out for drinks and dinner, and they're having a nice time, but she seems to not want to really mention or talk about what Jack does these days. And they're talking about their vacations, they're talking about what they do with their lives, and she's trying to kind of avoid the subject. And it just so turns out that the waiter is a big fan of her husband, is a big fan of Jack, and mentions the wrestling show, and when they find this out, they all want to go. So they go to the show, and they do love it. They, they all get into it, they count down the ten counts, they cheer, uh, they openly call Jack hot in front of her, which is kind of funny. Um, like, they're seeing a side of them that they've never seen before, and it's kind of, like, interesting to them. And they, they have a good time. And Jack points this out later, when he's trying to win the argument, but... She's constantly uncomfortable, and she even tries to, like, get them to leave when Jack's about to come on, and when they leave at the end of the night and they get to go away, like, they're having this happy goodbye, but when they drive away, stacy has got a kind of a tear in her eye, and she looks a little upset. And I, I, I was kind of, the episode made it more clear why she was upset. Like, I, I was kind of, like, going through a couple of ideas in my head as to why. Um... You know, I had the broad strokes, but the episode makes it very clear that this is about, you know, her kind of being trapped there, partially because of money issues from everything they're doing, but also just because, you know, Jack needs to be there every week, and he's not going to take any time off for the foreseeable future, and she wants to go on vacation, she wants to go away somewhere, and Jack's like, well, there's all these reasons why we can't, and this upsets her, um... And he's having a hard time juggling the, the, the home life, the personal and professional life, if you will. Uh, to quote half of every TV pitch ever written. Um, yeah, this, like, I, I think this built nicely to the final moment. It gave her a motivation to have this dispute with them. Um, the only critique I would really give it is that the end of last episode, it kind of felt like she was... I don't know, not like just happy with everything, but it, it kind of felt like the, the final beat of the story for her last episode when she was mowing the lawn was kind of... this level of acceptance of like the life she has. Um, and, and maybe I misread that. Maybe I misread that and it's a bit unfair to critique this for that, but it kind of felt like... And, and uh, don't get me wrong. Maybe, maybe just seeing her old friends and hearing about their lives and how free they are to go and do things. Um, because for that, that's the thing to keep in mind for those friends is that this for them was a novelty. This was a one night thing that maybe they'll see again in a few years when they come and visit again or however long it may be. Even if it's a few months, once every few months is very different from once every week. And the idea that Stacy. It wasn't even so much that she was embarrassed by her husband, because I, I was kind of reading some of her trying to get them away during the event as embarrassment. That was one of the things that was going through me. She doesn't want her friends to know that she's associated with this. Even though she's very supportive to Jack and everyone else, when she's around them, she sort of sees it as separate from like this whole life she had with her friends, and I thought there was a bit of that play. I don't actually think that so much anymore. It definitely felt more like, she's just here every week. This is not special to her. Uh, as much as she could be proud that she's shown off her husband and her brother-in-law and everyone else is doing here and, and be happy about it, she actually wanted to see her friends as a break from her everyday life. She wanted to revisit those old friendships and get away from it, um, which is kind of ties in with also wanting to go on vacation, right? All of this links up. It all makes sense. So, uh... The minor critique of maybe it feeling like a little bit of a bounce back from the end of the last episode, and it is minor anyway, um, and you could argue that it's a, an invalid critique. But that aside, I think this built nicely to that final moment for Jack, juggling all these things. And all the questions of, is this worth it? Is all this juggling actually something that he should be pursuing, given what it did to his father and what it led him to? Uh, and it's not that I think the the show is trying to suggest that he's going to get suicidal by any means, but the idea that he's maybe finally starting to really understand the pressure that his father was in all the time, and what that did to him, and him realizing that at the same time as uh, Ace kind of coming to this realization that the dad wasn't perfect, 
and um maybe this like ultra baby face thing that he was trying to live up to was a bit of a facade and you know people are, are more have more layers than that they're deeper than that There's more, they're more complex so th- those things all make a lot of sense to me um this episode was also just like very it didn't really let up in the pacing in terms of like there was no lulls in the drama both episode one and two definitely had sections where i was like okay you know it can get moving now you know we're we're seeing things play out this episode it felt so perfectly paced and i i never felt like i wasn't having fun or advancing plot or having meaningful character interactions everything constantly felt like it was adding to something um and then the other big thing of the episode which i cannot not mention is that uh, Bill <laughs> uh, has had a bit of a, 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 a sex tape leak on the internet uh, where he's drunkenly naked and saying a bunch of shit. I didn't quite catch what he said necessarily, but he's been tr- he tries to see Willie throughout the episode and eventually sees her at the end, but we, we get the reveal of like that's presumably what he wants to talk to her about, is that he's made a bit of a hiccup. And maybe he's going to need help, which might lead to wherever we go next with the actual wrestling promotion stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was hard to have fun with this one. Uh, like, it used the wrestling tropes and even, like, the subversion of wrestling tropes and the failure of wrestling sometimes and smartly using that to then move forward, which is a big part of wrestling. Sometimes the crowd don't react the way you think they are. Or sometimes fate will just get in the way and take someone away who was meant to be on a show or injure someone or whatever, and you have to adapt. You have to recalibrate and move forward with a new plan. And some of the best wrestling comes from just changing, like having to change the plan and then somehow stumbling into something or wisely making a choice that ends up possibly being better than whatever the original plan was. And to see that kind of strategically play out in the way that Jack recognizing Ace should be a heel and kind of manipulating it into that uh, and Ace not being good enough at this to recognize that that promo was not going to work and it shows you that he is green green here meaning um uh, new you know unexperienced still still learning the ropes as it were so uh so the fact that he couldn't recognize that is a good character beat for him and uh, all of it, all of it makes a lot of sense, and is uh, pretty good drama. So, I had fun with this one. Episode three, best best of the show yet. Um, hopefully, they, if they can keep up this level, episode to episode, I'll be very happy. Uh, but that is uh, that is the episode. So, thank you once again for watching or listening. You can, of course, support everything we do here by liking, subscribing, dinging the bell for notifications. All those things do help you channels a lot. YouTube channels a lot. It would help me out a lot. So please do hit the buttons. If you can, and everyone can, <laughs> there's buttons, just hit them. Uh, but if you can, you can also go over to patreon.com slash TV and support us financially for as little as $1 per month and help keep all the content coming that way as well, uh, which obviously helps really directly. Uh, so go and have a look at that too, and otherwise that is, uh, that is me. Um, and as far as just tying in some wrestling thoughts here, CM Punk coming back was very exciting. It was a very special night uh, just over a week ago. Um, and uh, big things for EAW coming soon. I'm I'm excited. I'm looking forward to All Out coming up this coming Sunday uh, and the shows before it. So um, there you go. I don't know how many people watching this actually give a shit about actual wrestling or care about my thoughts on EAW, which I very much enjoy most of the time. But... <laughs> Why not? I'll tack it on. CM Punk's back. It's an exciting time. Thank you for joining me once again. I always appreciate it. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?